Hey, what's up guys? It's Rick with the Digital Divide and today I want to talk about the Sleep Blocker. This is part of my character spotlight series where I go over obscure and kind of unknown characters from the comic book world and put a spotlight on them to let you know what they're about and what makes them cool. Now, I do want to say that this is not just going to be all Marvel characters. I, I do have some DC characters as well as some image characters lined up for future videos, but the first few that happened to come in mind were Marvel characters, so that's where my focus is right now. Now, Sleepwalker is not just the name of the title character, but also the name of his entire race or species. In fact, there are many Sleepwalkers, and as their name would imply, they inhabit kind Kind of a dream world. They live in what is called the Mindscape, which is the home of the Sleepwalkers. It's a dimension that connects the astral realm and the dreamscape, and it borders on the minds of all living things and is inhabited by many strange creatures. Some of them are very dangerous and seek to invade the sleeping minds of humans, but the Sleepwalkers are there to act as guardians to defend those minds and the Mindscape itself. They are essentially dream police. Now, the Sleepwalker comic book was created by a man called Bob Budensky, and in addition to creating Sleepwalker, he also worked on popular titles such as Avengers, Ghost Riders, Spider-Man, and Transformers. And although he didn't create the Transformers, he is responsible for the creation of some very popular characters within that franchise, such as Megatron, for example, or Bumblebee. He created both of those characters and worked on Transformers for a very long time. But creatively, he kind of wanted just he wanted to create his own character, and, and I'll let him explain it here. So when I left Transformers, one of the real reasons I one of the main reasons I left was that I was trying to develop my own character uh, that would have its own book, and that became Sleepwalker. So I left Transformers in '89 uh, sometime and uh, uh, developed Sleepwalker, and I think the first issue of Sleepwalker published in early like in April or May of '91. And uh, yeah, so that was, Sleepwalker was uh, very exciting for me because that became the first book that I put out that was a character of my own creation. The first issue of The Sleepwalker released in June of 1991. This initial run would last a total of 33 issues, uh, in addition to one holiday issue that is considered part of the run. Now, this run went from June of 1991 to February of 1994. Originally, Marvel envisioned that the Sleepwalker would be their version of the Sandman, which was a very popular character that was with DC at the time and later transitioned to Vertigo comic books. And although they both live in a dream world and have the ability to manifest themselves into our reality, the execution or overall design of the characters is wildly different. The Sandman was meant to be a dead serious, gothic-themed character, more in line with something like uh, The Crow, for example, and it tackled some really dark subject matter, whereas The Sleepwalker was more of a traditional superhero. Um, the aesthetic was more in line with like an alien. It wasn't something meant to be real life, so to speak. Now, in the comic book, Sleepwalker's powers and abilities are kind of all over the place, but according to good old Wikipedia, he possesses superhuman strength, durability, and resistance to injury. He also has a flotation-like flight ability. He is capable of projecting crude images of what he's seen from his eyes. Uh, his only offensive power is his warp gaze, and this is a vision-based power that allows him to alter the shape of physical objects around him uh, for his personal use. So despite some run-ins with a couple of A-listers in the Marvel universe, universe, the character of Sleepwalker never really took off the way that Marvel intended it to, although it did get a recent uh, four-issue miniseries, and this was a tie-in to the Marvel Infinity Wars event that happened in 2008, so this was a quasi-attempt to reboot the character, so to speak, and I think this run had some cool covers. Issue 4 in particular was a neat cover swipe of ASM number 238, which is the first appearance of the Hobgoblin. Now, the Sleepwalker character gained a huge cult following, uh, to the point where a dedicated group of Instagram fans decided to make their own Sleepwalker TV show. And this was originally intended, I believe, to be a four-episode fan-made TV show featuring the Sleepwalker, because they figured if Marvel isn't going to do it, we're going to do it, and maybe that'll convince Marvel that he's a character worth exploring in the MCU. Uh, I, I gotta say, guys, it's not great. Uh, I'll show you a little clip here. Oh, oh, oh dead guy. Oh, oh. Ah. Come on. Huh? Human. Is that 
Sandwichy? Are you the one responsible for this one's demise? What if I said it was cholesterol? His wounds infer otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda joking. Most people don't think of vibranium for its offensive capabilities. And I have been known to be pretty offensive. So float on back to Asgard. I am a sleepwalker, defender of the mindscape, protector of the innocent. It is my own. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Sounds like garbage. Yeah, so I, I I completely respect the passion and the work that they put in. I mean, for what it is, it's not bad. I think it was just held back by really low production values. Um, but, you know, I'll leave a link in the description below if you decide you want to watch the whole thing. But that's going to do it for me today. And as always, thanks for watching.